I'll let you guys, uh, we'll read that out loud together. And that is in Acts 4 12, we hear it that there's no other name, there's no other name, no one else, that, there's, sorry, there's salvation and no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Okay? Can anybody tell me what name that is? Jesus Christ, correct. What's your name? So I'll repeat that again. There's salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Okay. So I'm going to kind of give you the little background story of leading up to that passage. Uh, we read that Peter and John, the apostles, were preaching and speaking to the people, proclaiming in Jesus Christ the uh, resurrection of the dead. Just then, the priests, the captain of the guard, and the Sadducees uh, approached the apostles. They were very disturbed with what they were hearing. After hearing this, they seized Peter and John during the evening and placed them in jail. The next day, the priests and the elders and the councilmen in Jerusalem questioned them. And they, and they asked, about what a power, what authority do you have to do this? Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, was the first one to say, we're here to give an account today for the act of kindness that we've shown to a man that was slain. And now we're being asked how he was healed. So know this, it is by Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one you crucified, but the one that God has risen back from the dead. So with that, with that story, guys, I want to explain to you about requirements and standards and what it takes to be the greatest. We see that many, many players, basketball, soccer, baseball players, claim to be the greatest, but there's only one greatest. And everyone claims to be the greatest, but to be the greatest, you have to be number one in those requirements and standards. So let's, let's look at Jesus Christ. He lived a perfect life. Jesus had to live a perfect life of righteousness for us, a part of salvation. God wants to reveal the truth to you today so that in turn he may use you and tell others about the reassurance in Jesus that all can have today. By living a perfect life, sinless, free of sickness, free of hatred and darkness that we needed to live but could not, his life that saved us, not our own. The second, the, the second uh, point is the sacrificial death. We see and read and understand the story of the Bible of Jesus Christ who lived a perfect life and died in our place for our sins. My hope is not because I'm not a sinner, but because I'm a sinner who Christ has died for me. Man and women broke God's law, and under that penalty of sin is death. Okay? Third is the resurrection, guys. These are the, these are the requirements and standards that God, that God has allowed Jesus to have on earth. It's the resurrection because Christ was a perfect sacrifice and he lived a perfect life. He was able to resurrect his own body just after three days. So the main point is there's only one name that we can be saved by, and that is who? Jesus Christ, guys. So I, I want to come to you today openly and hoping that you do three things, okay? One, respond to the name of repentance and faith. So take up your cross because Jesus died on the cross for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. We remember to repent of our sins and ask God to restore our faith and give us daily strength. Two, Take hold of the promise of the name during any struggles. Can anybody give me uh, an example of the struggle that you're going through right now? What about you? Are you going through a struggle right now?
love of your neighbor and your brother, enemy or foe, and what he said was getting into a, a disagreement with one of his friends. We are all, we're all called to live by Jesus' uh, example is to love our friend and our neighbor, okay, and, and, and forgiveness. So, thank you guys. Uh, so, to take hold of the promise of the name during any struggle. So, I hope with this message today that each one of you take hold of that promise to seek and call out God, not just during good times, but also during difficult times. Remember that God wants a better relationship with you. Three guys is the last main point. Share the name through sports and opportunities that have been given to you. If sports are built on the foundation of teamwork and sharing, we should remember that we have a great responsibility in our community and also in school to follow these rules. Through sports, guys, we should be patient with our brothers and sisters and help point them out to Christ because he is, he is the blueprint and the one name that we seek, therefore we should uplift his name and the only name that we can be saved by. I want to uh, thank you guys for your time. Um, I didn't have a long speech. Uh, there's only a few minutes, a few more minutes, but if there's any questions about my pastors, then you can just let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to ask you, uh, answer those questions for you now. Um, anybody have any questions? Awesome. Maybe tell us uh, about <clears throat> how you came to, to hear the name of Jesus and how that changed your life. Uh, I came to know Christ uh, uh, about three years ago. I was, I was baptized as a Catholic, but, uh, but I came to know Christ about three years ago. Uh, my testimony is um, kind of, um, it's, it's not long, but I've always been a part of Christ, but I didn't recognize my relationship with him. I was lost. I was struggling with uh, a lot of stressful situations and family situations. And it was at that point where uh, uh, Scott and another friend, I fell to my knees and I said, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, please open my heart and give me strength so I can understand the ways uh, and the commandments that you have taught us uh, years and years ago. And it was at that point where I gave my life to Christ. And it was the best thing I ever did in my life. Um, I, I will tell you today, it is, it is a struggle. You do struggle, but there's going to be better times. And there's going to be, uh, at the end of this time, you'll be judged according to your, your testimony and your, what you do here on earth. Okay, guys? Hey, uh, I just want to add uh, something. I'm a baseball coach, and... Uh, when I meet somebody that plays baseball, that's been a pitcher all their life or been hitting all their life, I kind of have an automatic connection with them because I kind of know what they've been through. I know what they're trying to accomplish. And I know where they're going. I never met Austin before this morning, but he's my teammate in Christ. I feel like I know this guy, even though I, I met him five minutes ago, because I know his heart. I know his goals. I know what he struggles with because it's the same thing I struggle with on in my Christian walk. And so I think it's cool that our teammate, you know, came out here to a school probably never been to, uh, took his time this morning and wanted to share with you guys. And I hope that you see him as a teammate in Christ. The reason he's here today is to encourage you, just like your other teammates on your swim team, your field hockey team. He's here to encourage you in your walk with Christ. Uh, he's going through the same struggles. And I just think it's neat that when we can identify somebody as a fellow Christian, a fellow believer, uh, that should be encouraging to us. I'm going to close this with a quick word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much.